All right, uh, let's get to this uh, story about the NSA. Uh, more revelations coming out, getting less attention, sadly, um, in the press, but we still see the, um, these, these leaks by Snowden uh, driving some type of reform movement in Congress. And this is, uh, this is pretty stunning, and it also gives you insight into how, you know, this reminds me a little bit. There's a parallel here between the story and the story we just talked about with Matt Apuzzo about the uh, NYPD spying. You put the liaison in there, the idea that information is just flowing from the CIA to the NYPD is beyond rational to assume. Okay? You know this guy, Larry Sanchez, was, he's on the CIA payroll. I've decided I'm not going to talk to the CIA about anything interesting that we might find. Not, not happening. So this story, uh, new documents from Edward Snowden reported by The Guardian yesterday uh, show that the NSA has been sharing raw intelligence information with the Israeli government without first filtering it for data on the communications of American citizens. In other words, what the NSA has been doing, at the least, has been v hoovering up all this information and then supposedly has algorithms uh, that assure, that then minimizes the amount of American uh, domestic information that they have collected. It goes through what is known as a minimization process. There's a lot of flaws in that process, obviously, but that is the, supposedly the, the first line of defense as to the NSA, we're not spying on Americans. Well, apparently what they do is, they give that uh, data before the minimization process to the Israelis and then say to the Israelis under a memorandum of understanding between the NSA and the Israeli signet unit, signal intelligence unit, uh, and refers to an earlier agreement in principle reached in March 2009. The memo outlines the procedures that should be taken by the Israeli signet unit which they call the ISNU, to protect information regarding Americans and stresses that the constitutional rights of American citizens must be respected by Israeli intelligence staff. However, and here's the rub, these promises are not legally binding. So basically they say, the NSA says to the Israelis, hey, we're giving you data where we know for a fact there's a lot of information on American citizens in this. Do you promise-ish not to dig through it? And they say, yes, we do. And then the NSA says, and incidentally, this is not legally binding. And the Israeli intelligence says, oh, yeah, we know. And then the NSA says, hey, um, let's stop. Let's just, let's meet for lunch. And just talk about if you do come across anything that you think might interest us in terms of the American citizen. I mean, this is, this is the functional equivalent of extraordinary rendition to a third country that allows torture. That's what this is. This is simply a way of, I mean, there's a reason why we give it to the Israelis, right? We probably give it to the Brits, too. We probably give it to countries that we know we have a relationship with where if they find something that might interest us as they comb through the domestic information on American citizens that might interest us, they'll tell us. In the meantime, if they come through that information and find stuff that might interest them, eh, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. I also will predict that we'll hear very little from Congress about this because it's Israel. The memo also allows Israeli intelligence to retain data they identify as belonging to Americans for up to a year. Why would you do that? Yeah, just in case. 
the NSA needs to double check. I mean, <clears throat> it's just, and the hits keep coming, folks.